the Sam I am, the Sam I am. I do not like the Sam I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. Do not like them, Sam I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. Do you like them here or there? I would not like them here or there. I would not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. Would you like them in a house? Would you like them with a mouse? I do not like them in a house. I do not like them with the mouse. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. Would you eat them in a box? Would you eat them with a box? Not in a box, not with a box, not in a house, not with a mouse. I wouldn't eat them here or there. I would not eat them anywhere. I would not eat green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. All right, boys and girls, do you remember that song? What I don't do for you. <laughs> um, the reason I put that up there, I kind of came across some stuff today. It's been so rainy and it's going to be rainy tomorrow. So I thought it made me think of our brain breaks and how we loved when we found all of the um, Dr. Seuss books that people had wrapped um, to them. And so I, I went through and I added to our website some of our favorites. I uploaded this one because that was our favorite. And uh, Walk It In My Pocket um, by Migos. That was our other favorite, so that's on there too. But then I found um, Ludacris does Llama Llama Red Pajama, which is really good. And I found another guy who does six or seven different Dr. Seuss books. And he, you know, some of them, when we were looking for them, they, we were like, Ooh, they're not very good. He is really, really good. Um, in fact, I was listening to him as I was working today. <laughs> so check them out. Uh, I told your parents you should have an impromptu dance party. Um, get the whole family up. A lot of you can rap most of those songs and uh, show them your dance moves. So that can be your little brain break since you can't get outside. All right. So before we start with our new book, I just wanted to show you real quick. So I was looking at our Raz Kids today and we're good. We have everybody reading the blue represents first grade, which we're in first grade. So that's where we want to be. And the green is second grade. So we, we have about a quarter of our class um, reading in second grade already. So I thought that was pretty exciting. And then if you look over here at these bars, okay, we have three that are in green. That means that we're doing great. And then we have two that are in yellow. We're doing okay. We need to work on those skills. And then a red, which that's where overall as a class, we're showing we need um, to practice. So the green skills are identifying genre, which I was super excited about because in class, whenever I asked you what genre, we were reading, <laughs> I felt like we always got it wrong. So just remember, we have our fantasy, or we have our fiction and our nonfiction. And then in our fiction, we have two different types of fiction. We have our realistic fiction and our fantasy. Okay, so those are the main genres that we've been focusing on. Um, and we did great. In fact, we have 100%. So I was pretty happy about that. And then we have factor opinion. This is a little bit more difficult. Um, if you remember, facts are things we can prove. Um, we could look it up in a book and prove it, or science could prove it. Um, an opinion is just how you feel. Like if I say um, hot pink is the best color in the world, that's not a fact because not that's something you can't prove. Not everybody thinks that. That's just me. Um, if I say, um, let's see, the, uh, I can't even think of another good one when I'm on the spot. Um, let's say, for instance, I love a certain TV show and I say that that TV show is the best TV show. Well, for me it is, but for someone else it may not be. So just remember, opinions are things that individual people have, that they, how they feel. It's not something you can prove and it's not something that applies to everybody. Um, making inferences. This was hard too. Um, we were just starting to dig into this uh, before we left. And that's when we talked about how an inference is just like making a prediction. 
and we've talked about how predictions, they're not wild guesses. We take all the information around us to help us uh, decide what that prediction or what that inference is going to be. Um, for instance, when we were um, doing predictions in math about how many jelly beans we had, we weren't going to go and make random guesses of a million because it just didn't make sense. So just like with reading, we have to use what we know. We're going to use the text and we're going to use those pictures. We can't forget about pictures because one thing we talked about in reading group was that sometimes authors don't give you all of the information in the text. Sometimes you'll only find it in the picture. And if you don't look at that picture and try to figure out how it fits in, then you're not gonna fully understand what's going on. So when you're making inferences and you're making guesses, you wanna look at what you've already read, what the author has already told you and shown you, what would make sense of what whatever they're asking you, okay? And for that one, we actually are doing 80%, which is really great for that one too. Um, since we were really just starting to kind of dig into that. The three that we need to work on, which was shocking um, because it's saying that we're identifying genre at 100%, but that we're still um, mixing up reality and fantasy. So you know reality has the word real, okay? That's something that can happen in real life. Fantasy is something that cannot happen in real life. Some of the books we read where animals talk um, or, you know, have their own houses or there's um, cats that can fly spaceships, things that cannot happen. That is fantasy, like a fairy tale. Reality is real. It can actually happen. Like Junie B. Jones, that genre we've talked about is realistic fiction. Even though it's not true, that's why it's fiction, it could happen. So it's realistic fiction. And the other one was a narrative point of view. So think of it like the first two weeks of writing that you had to do. We were working on narratives. And who were you writing about? We were writing about something that you've done. Okay, so the point of view is coming from you. You're the one telling the story. So when they're asking you for a point of view, you have to look who's telling the story. So if I read one of Caden's narratives, in fact, I read one of Max's narratives because his mom always sends me his writing, which I love. And I'd love to see more. So if you can, snap a picture on your phone and just text it to me. Um, I knew by the way he was talking, he was saying, I, remember we picked that out. I can't remember which group it was, but someone um, discovered it right away. And they're like, well, I know it says I. So it's the author, whoever wrote the story, it's it's from their point of view, how they see it. And that's how they're writing it. So that's our point of view. And then the last one was uh, um, author's purpose. This one can be tricky as well. Um, we talked about how it could be just to entertain like Junie B. Jones is pretty much to entertain. It could be to inform, and that's a, most of our nonfiction texts, when you inform, you're teaching somebody, um, or to persuade. We haven't talked about persuade yet, and that's when you try to change someone else's mind um, about something. So for instance, Mr. Huber loves chocolate ice cream, and well, I love every ice cream, but let's just say, um, that I love cherry ice cream the best. And so I'm trying to change his mind and I'm telling him all of these reasons why cherry is the best ice cream, even though I know he loves chocolate. So when I'm trying to persuade him, I want him to think cherry is the best kind. So obviously you've got to have a good argument for it because someone's not just going to change their mind just because you said so. So when we're persuading or when an author is persuading, they're giving you all this information to say, hey, you need to think this way. So they're trying to change your thinking. So those are just a full, uh, few things I pulled out of there. Um, I will say, wow, people have really been working in here. Again, Caden, you are up to 5,430 stars. Um, right behind you is Mr. Gomez, 4,220. 
And then we have got uh, Mr. Collins. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, Cass got in here. She's been flying. Cass is at 3,170. And then we have Mr. Collins at 2,730. Nevaeh is at 2,520. Um, let's see. We've got Mackenzie at 1,450. Hannah at 1,470. Uh, and then we have Deerstein and Spooner and Avery Williams and Jace and Kenny and Lucas and Reese who are also working really hard on here and starting to get up um, close to the thousand. So um, if you're able to work on this every day, wonderful. If you can only get to it a few times a week, that's fine. Um, I would just like to see you working on here a little bit if you can. I already have some people really close to switching levels. So as soon I have a little printout here and it tells me um, what percent you're at towards um, upping level. So as soon as I see you get close to 100, then I will let your parents know because I have a pretty open window for you. But I'll let your parents know so they can make sure that they bump you up and you're reading at the next level. I have quite a few. Reflex math, um, we still have some people, they are definitely working at it. Um, I get it, if you don't have time, again, you can only do what you can do. I can't find my other paper, but I will show you this one. Um, so if it's read as a class, then as an average, then your class is only getting on zero to one days a week. If it's orange, it's one to two days, yellow, two to three days, and then green, three or more days. And you can see we're like in a big fat red. <laughs> so again, it's okay. I don't, maybe you could have forgotten about it. It is on the schedule. It's only for 10 minutes. So I get it. If you just can't do it, other stuff is more important. But if you have time, even a couple times a week, it's really gonna help with your math facts. So like I said, we can only do what we can do, but I just want to keep reminding you that if you find it a few minutes here or there, boys and girls, you can go ahead and um, jump in with that. Okay? So tonight we're going to start Junie B. Jones, Boss of Lunch. Coconut Picks picked our new book. So I'm excited. It took us a long time to read, <laughs> to read the, the last one. So chapter one is called Not Normal. You can see Junie B. Who knows what she's going to get into in this chapter. Ah, Thursday. Dear first grade journal. Hooray, hooray, it came, it finally came. Yesterday the delivery man brought it right to my house. And today I carried it to school for the very first time. Right now it's sitting under my desk. I keep sneaking down and to see it kind of close. But my teacher said, to please stop doing that. Only guess what? He's not even watching me right now. So I think I'm gonna sneak down there one more time and that will be it, possibly. I wish myself good luck from Junie B, first grader. I put down my pencil and looked all around. Room one was still writing in their journals. I smiled very sneaky and then I bent over in my chair real slow and I reached way down and I lifted up the lid of my brand new shiny lunchbox. <laughs> May hollered that out. Junie Jones just opened her lunchbox again, Mr. Scary, and you told her not to do that anymore. Remember? May is that tattletale girl who sits next to me. I do not actually care for her. My heart pounded very hard. I bent over even more, and I hid my head so my teacher couldn't see me. Only I didn't really do a good job of hiding because just then I heard Mr. Scary's shoes walking towards me. Judy B, why is your lunchbox open again? Did I just speak to you about this a few minutes ago? Sounds like me. I kept my head down and looked at the floor. One of Mr. Scary's shoes started tapping at me. Tappy shoes are not happy shoes, I think. Junie B, said Mr. Scary. Do you have a good reason for opening your lunchbox again? I quick closed my eyes and I tried to think of a good reason. Mr. Scary's shoes tapped louder. I opened my eyes and I peeked at it and then bingo, all of a sudden a miracle happened. One of my eyes saw my napkin in the corner of my lunchbox. 
lunchbox and a bright idea popped right into my head. I quick grabbed the napkin and I started shining Mr. Scary's shoes. Look, Mr. Scary, look. Here is my good reason. See, I wanted to shine your shoes with my napkin. Oh boy, I don't think he's gonna believe that one. She's so silly. I shined and shined. This is the smartest reason I've ever come up with, I said very proud. I smiled up at him. Would you like some spit on the napkin, I asked real nice. A little spit does make it look pretty gleamy. Mr. Scary quick pulled his shoe away. No, Junie B, no spit, please, just sit up. I sat up. Mr. Scary stared and stared at me. I wiggled in my seat, very uncomfortable, causing caught because staring teachers make me kind of squirmy. Finally, Mr. Scary talked again. I want you to stay out of your lunchbox, Junie B. We have a rule in room one. Lunchboxes are to be opened only in the cafeteria. I did a sad sigh. Yeah, I know, but I waited a really long time to get this lunchbox and yesterday finally came to my house. And so today is my first day of not carrying a plain brown paper bag to school. And so every time I look at the new lunchbox, I just feel happy inside. I picked it up to show him. See how cute it is? My mother ordered it from a nature store. It has pictures of baby birds. See all of them? I pointed. This one is my favorite. It's called an owlet. Owlet is the name for a baby owl. My grandpa, Frank Miller, taught me that. I pointed at a different bird. That one is an eaglet, I said. An eaglet is a baby eagle. After that, I held my lunchbox way high in the air so all of room nine could see it. See all of the birdlets, children? There are owlets and eaglets and ducklets and chicklets, I explained. I put my lunchbox on my desk and I took out the thermos. And see the thermos, people? The thermos has pictures of bird nests on it. Isn't it so cute? May made a face. Ick, who wants to drink out of a stinky, pooey bird's nest? I made a face at her. I do. That's who. I love drinking out of stinky, pooey bird's nests. May reached into her desk and pulled out a lunch ticket. Well, I buy my lunch, Judy Jones. Bot lunches are much better than barat lunches. Bot lunches don't sit around all morning and get soggy. I cross my arms at that girl. That's the dumbest thing I even ever heard of. Brat lunches are way better than bot lunches because brat lunches are made special by our very own mothers. Mr. Scary did a frown. Okay, okay, girls, it's enough. But May kept on arguing with me. For your information, Judy Jones, mothers are not professional lunch makers. They're just plain old normal people. I stamped my foot at her because that was the final straw. Do not call my mother normal, May. No one in my whole entire family is normal. So there, they started to laugh. And then some of the other children laughed too. I don't even know why. Finally, Mr. Scary snapped his fingers. I put my lunch box, box back on the floor. Oh, it was not the best morning. Chapter two is called Hoagies. Real quick before I go, um, I wanted to let you know when I send out the links from our specialists, if you do any of the stuff, have your parents send it to me um, and I will make sure that it gets to the specialist. So um, Reese did one of the art links this week was to, it was a, uh, helped you draw um, uh, health heroes. So he drew a picture of a doctor taking care of a patient, a COVID patient. So I thought that was kind of neat. So I sent it to Mr. LeBeau so he could include it in the Artist of the Week newsletter that goes home every week. So anything that um, comes from, like right now, I think it's, I'm doing the other links. Right now it's just uh, Mr. LeBeau's is sending art and then Miss Hayden and Miss Green are sending um, the music. And I have another thing I want to post for you tonight for Miss Green. It's the follow-up from the challenge she gave you. So um, anytime like they offer a challenge too, if you want to do it, just send it to me and I'll make sure I get it to her. Um, but it was kind of neat. We didn't have a whole bunch of kids, just like a few kindergartners and then I sent her one. But um, yeah, just let me know because we'd like to inc include, especially with the art, we'd like to include that in 
the newsletter that goes home to parents. So um, I think that's it for tonight. I love you guys very, very much. Um, don't ever show anyone this video except for yourselves. And I suppose your family, because that was very embarrassing, Banny. I know I have some pretty sick rhymes, but I like to keep it to myself. All right. Love you guys. Have a good night.